Hi and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be about my pregnancy and my labour which was at 33 weeks and then also about my time with a little baby spent in intensive care. So I'm going to kind of split the video into two sections. So the first section will be about uh, the pregnancy and the labour itself and the second section I'm going to make it about um, how the experience was of having a newborn baby in intensive care. So before we begin, I do just want to add that I may be going to a little bit of detail when it comes to my pregnancy and my labour. So if you're someone that doesn't like too much information, then just as uh, I will let you know if I'm going to go into too, too much information. So just skip ahead a few seconds and you can carry on watching the video. So I fell pregnant two years ago now. So my little boy is 18 months old. So it was around two years ago that I found out I was pregnant. I was not planning on having a baby and I was on the contraceptive pill and I just thought that my period was really, really late. So I was having all these symptoms that looking back now, I was pregnant, <laughs> but at the time I just thought that I was really due on my period. So I had a bit of nausea, which is normal for me anyway when I'm due on my period. I also had really, really painful boobs, it really hurt, but that is, that's quite normal for girls when they're due to start on their period. And I also had really severe back pain. Um, I do suffer with a back condition, so back pain for me isn't um, an uncommon thing. So just these things didn't even cross my mind that I could have been pregnant. Um, I was actually at my mother-in-law's house when I was explaining to her all these symptoms I was having and that I was a week late on my period. And she just said, Jess, are you sure you're not pregnant? And it, I said to her, nope, not pregnant. Um, but I humoured her and I went and bought a pregnancy test and went home that evening, weed on the stick, and I was pregnant. <laughs> when the plus sign came up on the pregnancy test, I was in such a state of shock, as was my partner, because neither of us thought this was going to happen. Obviously, I was on the pill, um, but obviously it was meant to be. So we eventually, we got excited about it and we were really, really happy and excited to be having a baby. The first 12 weeks of pregnancy can be really difficult for women. It's normally the time where you feel most tired and you feel ill all the time. And luckily, I was really lucky in that respect. I did feel sick, but I was never sick once. However, I did suffer with really extreme fatigue and I was always so tired. And working in a restaurant when I'm on my feet all day, I did not want to go into work. I wanted to be in bed all day and also suffering with back pain. Um, I just wanted to lie down. Being on my feet is something I didn't want to do. Um, however, after the 12 weeks pass, my exhaustion left and I'd never felt better. I felt like I wanted to clean the house and prepare for baby and I was really excited and I just felt on top of the world. Um, so everything was going swimmingly, everything was healthy and normal. So when I was around 18 weeks pregnant, I started getting tightenings in my tummy and they were quite frequent and quite regular. So I contacted my midwife to talk to her about them and she said that they were Braxton Hicks. Um, but she asked me to come in anyway to get monitored um, as it was quite early to be experiencing them. So Braxton Hicks are practice contractions. So they prepare your body for when you go into labor so your body sort of knows what to do when it comes to the time. And I was having them really regularly and they were quite painful actually and when I'm quite a small girl but when my when my uterus did contract you could really just see the outline of my uterus in my tummy which uh, freaked me and my partner out completely and um, seeing baby kick and things was a little bit odd um, so early on but I was experiencing these uh, Braxton Hicks from around 18 weeks until I gave birth at 33 weeks and I was being monitored for them. So weekly she would check on me and just do extra checks to make sure that I wasn't going into preterm labor. So another thing I experienced in my pregnancy, and this may be a little bit of too much information for some people. So if you don't want to listen, just skip ahead a few seconds. Um, but I did experience really, really watery discharge, which looking back now, I think may have been my waters and could have been a slow leak. And however, I never had an internal examination, so I can't be sure of that. So now we've spoken about my pregnancy I can now talk about my labour. So 
I have some notes on my phone because it was 18 months ago and um, so I wrote everything down so I don't forget anything because I'm hoping that this video will help other mums if they think that they're going into labour just like I did and I've spent a lot of time on YouTube googling and what, what would happen if I gave birth now at 33 weeks and how my baby would be so I really don't want to miss anything out so on I'll give you a few dates so George my little boy he was due on June the 4th and on the 19th of April, which was the Thursday, I was at work doing a normal shift, standing on my feet all day. And again, too much information, so skip ahead if you want to, um, just a little bit. But I actually was standing up and I felt something in my knickers. And I went straight to the toilet and saw what I had thought I had lost my mucus plug. I know your mucus plug sits in your uterus which sort of protects the waters and the baby and when you're due to or normally when you're close to labour you'll lose your mucus plug and normally have a bloody show and um, sometime in a few days later, a few hours later, you may have a baby. Um, so at 33 weeks I went into a bit of a state of panic especially being at work. So from work I called my midwife to tell her what I thought that I'd lost my mucus plug and she told me to go to the hospital to get checked out and whilst I was there I had an examination and they also did a test to see whether I was likely to go into preterm labour within the next 7 to 10 days and it came back negative and they just said your mucus plug can actually grow back and I hadn't lost much of it and there was quite a lot of it still in there so not to worry, to go home, to rest and just carry on with pregnancy as normal. So that's what I did, didn't go back to work that evening, took a night off but I did go back to work the following day and did a double shift. Um, I still had seven weeks to go until I, and I was planning on working up until about 38, 39 weeks anyway. Um, so I went back to work on the Friday, everything was normal, and then it was on the Saturday, so the 20th, uh, no, the 21st, sorry, so I had the 21st off work, went to bed that evening, and it was about 10pm at night, so I was lying down, and again, too much information, but I felt a trickle of water I guess in, in my underwear so I sat up went straight to the toilet sat down and some more liquid did come out of me and I wasn't really sure what it was so I called my partner in we discussed a little bit and we decided that we was going to call the maternity ward but being 10pm at night it was closed so I actually called the labour ward and the midwife there actually questioned me if I hadn't just peed myself um, and I said to her, I'm pretty sure I'd know if I had wet myself, and um, I definitely think that it is my waters. Um, so she told me to come up and have an examination done. So we quickly ran around the house, packing everything that we could for baby. We didn't even have everything. I didn't even have his pram. Um, a let alone clothes that would have fit him. I packed loads of clothes for myself. I'm sure we missed so many things and my partner had to go home quite a lot to get things. But we put the car seat in the car, made sure we have everything. Not that he would have been coming home at 33 weeks anyway, but um, in a state of panic, you just sort of rush around and you don't really know what you're doing. Um, so I got in the car, was having contractions actually, um, very similar to the Braxton Hicks contractions that I've been having since I was 18 weeks pregnant. So they weren't particularly painful, they were just a bit uncomfortable. And they were happening, I would say, every around three minutes and lasting for about 30 seconds. Um, so when we arrived at the hospital, from the car park it is actually quite a bit of a walk to the labour ward so you have to go through the main entrance around the hospital and then up some stairs or in the lift up to the labour ward and so it was about a 10 minute walk and I'm pretty sure that, that 10 minute walk made my waters break even more because I was still losing a lot of fluid. So when we arrived at the hospital and I got checked in and had a gown put on and we got given a room, I was having an internal examination to check whether my waters had gone or hadn't and they confirmed that my waters had broken and whilst they were obviously, I think it's because when they were internally examining me, it must have broken my waters even more. So as soon as I stood up, everything just came out and there was so much water and I had no idea that there would have been that much water inside of my stomach because it just kept pouring out of me and I went through probably so many sanitary towels in my underwear because they were just getting soaked through so, so quickly. So I was hooked up to a monitor 
and this monitor was measuring my contractions and it was also measuring the baby's heart rate. So I was having contractions, they were around every three minutes for about 30 seconds a time. Again, they weren't really that painful, they were just uncomfortable. So I ended up actually being on this um, machine for about 24 hours. So I went into the hospital at about 11pm Saturday night and I gave birth again 11pm the following day. So I was probably on the machine for about 22 hours, so pretty much the whole day, um, which was really uncomfortable. So because I was 33 weeks and five days pregnant at the time, they weren't sure whether to induce me or just to see what happens and ride it out. So I was 33 weeks and six days. They induced me anyway, so they put a pessary in, which was really painful by the way. I don't know if any of you have ever had one before, I'm sure you have, but it was incredibly painful and I actually needed gas and air, so I'm not sure how I would have been if I had to give birth naturally. Um, but it was not enjoyable. So once they had decided that they did want to induce me, they gave me some steroid injections in my leg, which um, strengthened the baby's lungs, because obviously they're not gonna be fully developed yet. He was being born around seven weeks early, so they, he needed all the help he could get. It was really impossible to sleep or do anything really when you're hooked up to this machine. However, I am glad that I had it on because my little boy's heart rate kept dropping and I don't know if you've experienced this but when you have the machine on and the baby's heart rate drops um, a really sort of panicking alarm goes off and everyone starts running in to check everything and this happened quite a bit throughout the Sunday throughout the 22nd but they didn't seem too worried about it because then eventually it did level out um, so I still had the pessary in nothing had really um, improved however being early in my pregnancy they weren't really fussed about it happening too quickly they were just going to sort of ride it out and see what happens. It was about 10 p.m. at night when I was laying in bed and the alarm started going off again and loads of people started coming in and the baby's heart rate had dropped crazy crazy low so they decided there and then I was going to have a cesarean section and it was too late to give me a epidural so they put me under general anaesthetic and that was it. So they, I, I just remember them taking the pessary out, whisking me onto a bed, putting me in a, in a surgery gown, wheeling me round to the room. I remember looking back and seeing my mother-in-law and my partner crying, which made me cry and panic even more. Um, so I went straight into the surgery room, I had to drink something and then they put um, the cannula in my arm and they just said to count to five and I'd be gone and I didn't even get to two and I was gone and I was asleep. I don't really remember much of waking up after my cesarean, I was so drowsy from the anaesthetic that I just didn't want to see anyone or meet anyone, not that I didn't want to, I just don't think I had the energy to. So if you've had general anaesthetic before, you're sort of in and out of consciousness until you're sort of fully recovered from the anaesthetic. Um, once I had fully come round, all I remember thinking is that my scar was so painful and I couldn't cough or sneeze or breathe properly without having a pillow over my scar because it was so, so painful. George was born at 22.59pm on the 22nd of April and I actually didn't meet him until around 10am, 11am the following morning. I was so exhausted from being in, being in labour basically for two days beforehand and not having any sleep but then also having the anaesthetic which makes you really sleepy anyway. So when I had fully recovered and came round from that, um, I went in a wheelchair and my partner will be round to meet our little boy who was in intensive care and he was so tiny. He was actually quite a healthy weight considering how early he was. So he was four pounds and 13 ounces, um, which considering isn't actually that small, but he did look tiny. So George was in the high dependency unit for about 48 hours. And this is where he first had all his cannulas put in, he had his feeding tube put in, he had his bloods taken, he had um, a breathing mask on for a little bit. So he had all these things on for our 48 hours until his body was stable enough to come off all these monitors um, and go into just the intensive care unit where lots of other babies go just to sort of get strong enough to come home. 
So after those 48 hours, he moved into the intensive care unit where he was off the breathing machine. He was still in an incubator. He still had his temperature gauge on. He did have a feeding tube, so he wasn't old enough yet to feed from a bottle, so he was fed through a tube. I was in hospital for three days after my caesarean section and I kind of didn't want to go home because I wanted to be in the same hospital where my child was and it was a really difficult thing when I was strong enough to come home after my caesarean section and go back home but leaving the hospital without your baby was just a really weird experience and sort of coming home and not having your baby there going into the nursery, not having your bump anymore, but there also being no baby. Um, so we spent every day in that hospital, the whole time he was there, from about 8am until about 8pm in the evening. And it is, even though you're just sitting by your baby's bedside, it is such a draining experience. So as I mentioned, George had a feeding tube in, so we did try and start, well for the first few days he was fed through a tube, so the tube went in his nose, down his throat and then into his tummy. He had his feeding tube in for around a week, and from about the three day mark we started trying him on a bottle, just a really small bottle that they have at the hospital for premature babies, but he picked up on it so amazingly well so quickly um, it was just such a good improvement so when we was when he was put in intensive care we asked the doctors what was going to be the realistic time that he was going to come home and they said they were aiming for his due date in the back of my head I thought that's six weeks away I can't wait until then to bring my baby home and um, but he surprised everyone they said he wouldn't start drinking out of a bottle straight away but he did and he really shocked everyone and once he'd got the hang of it he didn't stop he was in the incubator for around a week or so so he couldn't maintain his body temperature outside of the incubator because of him being so premature so he was left in the incubator uh, for around a week until his temperature stabilised. When he came out of the incubator, he was just put in an ordinary cot and he was monitored for 24 hours, uh, his temperature was monitored for 24 hours to see if it remained stable so he didn't have to go back in the incubator, which he didn't, which was great relief because it was just another thing, it was another step closer that he was building up his strength and it was a closer time that he'd be able to come home. So about a week into his intensive care stay, he started to look a little bit yellow and um, it's not uncommon for babies to look yellow when they're born, something called jaundice. So a lot of babies have slight jaundice when they're born. However, when they're constantly in the hospital and they're being monitored, they're constantly having blood tests and things to see how high the levels are to see whether they need any treatment. So they would do a prick on the baby's foot where they would take some blood, go away, measure it, and if the levels came back high, then they needed treatment, and if they were lower, they didn't need it. And he was being monitored every day for this and they were always lower. However, a few, about a week in, his levels started creeping up just a little bit. And it was around the a week and sort of two day mark that his levels were quite high. So he had to be put under a blue light, which was a really horrible sight to see. So he was sort of back in like an incubator style thing, which had sort of blue lights all above it, really, really bright bright blue lights and because it was so bright he had to wear a mask over his eyes and it just it, oh, it was such a horrible feeling knowing that my baby had like a sleep mask on over his eyes and couldn't see anything and it worries me how scared he must have been because he was just lying there under this light we wasn't allowed to touch him because we couldn't open the incubator and he was in there for about 24 hours which in the grand scheme of things isn't a long time compared to what some other babies go through and we were really really lucky um, but after the after he had had that his jaundice levels had come down and he was able to come off the lights. So around the 13 day mark the doctors asked if we wanted to come and stay in one of the family rooms they had which we could stay the night, have George in with us, which was a really exciting thing. We could have our baby in the night with us where I could get up and do night feeds. Never thought I'd be excited to get up and do a night feed, but I was really, really excited to have him with us. However, it was nice to know that the doctors were still there. He was still hooked up to his machines because he had to be in the hospital. And if something went wrong, the doctors would be in there straight away to look after him. 
Luckily nothing went wrong, everything went smoothly and the next day we were ready to take him home. So when it came to taking him home there was a lot of paperwork that needed to be filled out, final tests that needed to be completed. George had to have a final few more blood tests, he had to have a hearing test done, he had to have all like his temperature done and his blood pressure and things um, and then also be signed off by the doctor which took a really really long time. And we put him in the car and we went home. And so he came home when he was two weeks old, so gestationally he was 35 weeks and six days old. Um, so still really small, shouldn't have been born. Um, and yeah, that was my experience of my pregnancy, my labour and the same intensive care. And I hope that this video will have helped some women who may, like me, lost my plug a few days before giving birth and spent their time googling what will happen at 33 weeks if I gave birth now. So I think in my next video I will show you my little boy George who like I say is now 18 months old. He is such a cheeky little chappy and I love him so much. He is really the best thing that's ever happened to me. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helps people um, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.